We begin today with the latest in Ukraine. Most of the attention is now centering on the southern peninsula of Crimea, which is located on the northern coast of the Black Sea. As geopolitical tensions continue to rise, control over the region is now in question. But for more on the most recent developments, I spoke with RT's Igor Piskanov, and I first asked him to talk about what happened in Crimea today. Well, I'd have to say more or less it's been a normal uh, working Tuesday. Uh, lots of people on the streets uh, going about their business. Uh, all the roads are open to traffic. Shops are open, cafes, restaurants, schools, uh, etc. Uh, even sometimes when we are filming reports, locals come up to me and say, why uh, is there so many media here still? What are you guys reporting on? There's nothing to report on, uh, and uh, which is, uh, I think, a little bit is a little bit humorous, uh, but uh, it's actually the media or uh, Western and Ukrainian media uh, with which many locals are quite disappointed. Uh, they're really unhappy with the way uh, the West has been showing the pictures here, uh, the situation here in the Crimea, saying that when they watch some of the U.S. mainstream channels, they get a feeling after watching those pics of tanks and stuff uh, here, allegedly in the Crimea, they, they say they have a feeling that there's a, some sort of a war taking place. Uh, and they clearly don't agree with that point of view. In fact, a group of activists held this protest drive uh, on Tuesday in one of the Crimean cities, uh, saying they want uh, the, the, the world and the media to pay more attention uh, to how objective their reporting is. Uh, in fact, many are saying that they think the situation here in the Crimea is much more calm uh, right now than in the rest uh, of the country. And I think the only uh, remaining tensions which do come up now and then are probably between uh, the so-called self-defense squads and uh, the uh, those Ukrainian troops, uh, the remaining Ukrainian troops, which still haven't uh, pledged allegiance to, to local uh, authorities. Uh, and Igor, there are reports of shots being fired in the air. Have you heard any shots yourself? Um, does the area seem to be safe? Well, the city is completely safe. We are in uh, Simferopol right now, which is the capital of uh, the Crimea. Also in Sevastopol, uh, which is uh, the largest, uh, the second largest seaport of uh, Ukraine in general, the situation is pretty calm there. But there was this one incident uh, when tensions rose between uh, one of those self-defense squads, which have been guarding uh, one of the airports here in the Crimea, and 50 Ukrainian troops, uh, along with their officers and representatives of the media, who were actually broadcasting that whole situation live, they marched onto the self-defense squads trying to enter this uh, airport. And uh, they did fire uh, warning shots into the air, uh, asking, them, asking the troops to stop. And even though it's clearly heard on the video, which was broadcast live, uh, that some of the people in that uh, crowd were trying to provoke uh, the uh, uh, the self-defense squad saying just fire at us but they weren't armed uh, and they were able to uh, resolve the situation from negotiations no fighting broke out and we're getting reports now that actually apparently they were allowed to enter that uh, airport and probably right now they are or allegedly they are even patrolling it together but i can't really um, confirm this information since uh, we are pretty far away from that place right now but apart from that incident uh, in general like i say uh, the situation is pretty calm all right and elections are planned now for may that's what we're hearing what are people on the ground saying about this what's the reaction to that well, uh, the elections are being planned, or the presidential election is being planned by the new authorities in Kiev. But the locals here uh, are saying more and more of them, and the official, uh, the local authorities here are also saying that they do not uh, recognize uh, any sort of new decisions coming out of the new authorities since they think they came to power uh, illegally and they don't see any legitimacy in these orders. And uh, right now, everyone here is focusing on the upcoming referendum. Uh, which should decide whether or not the Crimea should have even more independence uh, from Kiev. And if uh, the presidential election is planned for the end of May, then uh, this referendum is now being planned for the end of March. So uh, perhaps it's during the referendum that uh, we'll find out how much independence uh, from Kiev 
um, the Crimeans living here in this part of the country really want. Uh, I also think that uh, we'll find out about some uh, economic changes in the financial uh, institutions and structures here because uh, lots of attention among the locals, lots of discussions right now are focused on uh, how salaries will be paid, uh, pensions and so on. And uh, well, we've heard from uh, President uh, Putin, uh, President of Russia, who, uh, who uh, met with the Russian journalists in Moscow and he did promise uh, financial support from Russia to the Crimea. So this news was greeted with applause here in the Republic. Local authorities say it will be used uh, productively also in, uh, to increase the salaries of uh, local uh, civil workers, uh, police, and so on. So uh, I guess uh, the authorities are now focusing more about uh, uh, just working out things here in the Republic independently, sort of from Kiev, even though this referendum still hasn't been held, and even though the authorities in Kiev altogether say that uh, the Crimeans have no right to hold any type of independence referendum under several new laws which they've just passed there. Well, it seems there is yet a lot to be determined, and it will all play out in the next few months. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. But RT correspondent Igor Piskanov.